Good morning. I am Dr. Rupam Bhagavan. I am a retired professor of neurology and currently the chairman of the PDMDRC, Parkinson's Disease Movement Disorder Research Center at the Yashoda Hospital, High Tech City. Deep brain stimulation is a surgery done for patients with movement disorders primarily. It is mainly considered as a second miracle in Parkinson's disease and this was actually about 30 years back. This entails making two small holes in the head and putting electrodes in the brain. This is targeted specifically to very small target deep in the brain hence it's called deep brain stimulation. This is connected to a pacemaker in front of the chest under the skin. The patient has a tremendous improvement in his Parkinson's disease symptoms. The tremor, the rigidity, the echinacea all come down. There's about 70 to 80 percent improvement. The medicines come down by about 50 percent, and the patient's symptoms become much less. So he's able to be functional, get back to his work. The idea of the whole thing is that it should be done early, not late. and if you do it earlier the more functional you are the benefits last very long it lasts 15 to 20 years at, at the very least there is progression of the disease subsequently but much less and patients can work well through most of their working lives if you do it later on the improvement is much less compared to what is seen in uh, patients who get it done early deep brain stimulation is a brain surgery it entails making two small holes in the skull this is done under local anesthesia the patient is awake we introduce wires or electrodes into the brain recording the activity in the brain subsequently we stimulate with low currents to see the benefits in the rigidity the echinacea that is the movement which is slow will become fast the tremor which is there will become controlled all this is seen in the operating room table the patient is fully awake then what happens is we also stimulate with little higher current to see for the side effects which are due to the spreading of the current to the neighboring structures at the end of the surgery we decide which is the best track because we'll be putting in three electrodes and we see which is the best track the final electrode this is deep brain stimulation and this is done with the patient awake Subsequently we will anesthetize the patient for about 20 minutes and put the battery in the front of the chest that is done under general anesthesia so the main surgery is actually a brain surgery but unlike other brain surgeries the patient is fully awake and fully conscious during the procedure DBS cannot cure neurological disorders but it's considered close to curing because what happens in patients with parkinson's disease you get a marked relief in the symptoms it's about 70 to 80% medicines come down by about 50 to 60% so patient is much more functional than before his symptoms really improve remarkably so not only is the patient happy the family is also happy and they are able to get back to their active lives so it is considered the second miracle in parkinson's disease in case of dystonia where there is no such treatment it's even more remarkable dystonia seems to progress even less than parkinson's disease and that's why this is much more in beneficial in patients with dystonia especially those with dystonia who are primary generalized dystonias that means they don't have secondary causes like infections causing this or a stroke causing this they tend to improve much more the primary generalized dystonias in our center we do it in the standard traditional way which is the patient is awake he is able to tell us what is happening to him how much improvement is there and he is also to tell us about his side effects so these benefits are very essential for the patient uh, because this actually helps us to optimize and choose the best track patients in some centers which are basically dominated by surgeons are they are doing it with the patient asleep saying that the patient need not worry about the surgery but these lead to suboptimal placements and the response is a little less compared to those who get it done when they are awake actually there are two effects in this the day after the surgery the patient will find that he is much better but some of this may last for a few days to a couple of weeks or so after which the effect goes up this is called the micro lesioning effect subsequently the he may fluctuate or he may 
improve gradually. This takes about two to three months to settle down. And by about six to nine months, we expect the full effects of the DBS. So the patient does improve rapidly and may have some intermittent difficulties, but then it settles down by nine months or so. Actually, because of the marked benefit in Parkinson's disease, DBS is being used for all other indications. It's being used for dystonia, it's being used for epilepsy. They are now trying to use it in psychiatric disorders like obsessive compulsive disorders. They're trying to use it even for experimental basis for diseases like Alzheimer's. But this is mainly because it's been such a profound benefit in patients with Parkinson's disease. DBS can make some differences because there are two parts of the subthalamic nucleus or any other nucleus in the brain, one of which supplies the motor parts, which controls your movement, your stiffness, your tremor, and the other is which drives your personality. It's called the mesolimbic system. Dopamine is the same chemical which actually controls the behavior in diseases like schizophrenia, where there is too much of dopamine, unlike in Parkinson's disease, where there is too little of dopamine. So what happens is when you stimulate in cases of some patients, you can actually make him very hyperactive and you need to be careful. We can easily control this by changing the contact or by changing the current or by giving additional medicines to control this. What is remarkable is that all the changes in the personality which are beneficial, like making him more active, making him more focused on his work, can be used in cases of DBS positive effects. If you have negative effects such as excessive activity or excessive anger, excessive uh, compulsive behavior like gambling, all that can be controlled. That depends entirely on how long the battery that you purchased initially was designed for. If it is a permanent battery, it will last approximately around five years in cases of Parkinson's disease. This does not need to be recharged. If you take a rechargeable battery, we can last anywhere between 15 to 25 years. This is recharged once in every 10 to 15 days and can be done at home. And this is only to be replaced when the battery wears off after 25 years or so. Ideally, DBS can be turned off if required, but we generally do it only if the patient is undergoing some sort of surgery where the electrical current has to be passed through his body, such as cautery has to be done in some surgery or some major surgery, then we switch it off. We also switch it off only if the battery is wearing off, then it is switched off and replaced with a new battery. During these, if it goes off inadvertently also, and that can happen, the patient can become very rigid, very akinetic, very slow, and it can be sometimes dangerous to the life. But we manage that by giving more tablets for the time being.